Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! He's taken another one, and another, and Howard Foster has stopped it! Wow! That is going to be controversial! That's a crunching right hand, and that must finish it! It must finish it! Taylor trying to catch himself! Hi there, good afternoon everybody. This is Raps on TV, bringing you the latest in boxing news. My name's Kojo and I'm here with the panel, Inam and Dinaz. Do you want to say hello guys? Uh, hi guys, uh, it's Inam, uh, Raps on TV. Um, just want to say thank you for dialing in. Hey, I'm Dinaz, nice to be here. And uh, let's get ready with the show. Perfect guys, so um, it's been a busy week, um, but you know, let's, let's, not, let's not beat around the bush. Um, it's been a very exciting week in terms of the fight that we have coming up this weekend um it looks to be the big one ward versus kovalev both fighters are undefeated and they're currently fighting for the wba the wbo and the ibf light heavyweight uh, belts in terms of both fighters um you know we know we know they're both strong competitors um inam what's your thoughts on the fight and how did you feel when you heard this fight was being made my thought on the fight is it's probably one of the best fights of the, of this decade. Um, undoubtedly, it's two prime light heavyweight fighters you know, meeting in their prime, something that happens very, very rarely in boxing. So I was very, very static to he- hear the news. Um, I don't think it's been promoted that well, in all honesty. It's not been promoted anywhere uh, in the likes of the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, and I thought I think they could have done a lot better to bring far more people into the fold of boxing. So that's my initial thoughts. Uh, in terms of, a, from a pure purist point of view, I think it's a phenomenal matchup. You've got, you know, in very simple terms, you've got a big, strong, power, powerful puncher versus an elite technical specialist. So it's an intriguing matchup. Um, what do I think about the fight? Good I mean, description. I, yeah, you know, um, and I think it's, it's, it's a fight of our times. You know, he's gonna he's gonna define the pound for pound fighter of this generation. So totally understand. And Dinaz, what's your thoughts on on this on this fight? Yeah, I uh, I agree with Anam about that. I think that the promotion. I always feel like the promotion could always be better for some of these big fights. It seems that. Uh, HBO have a lot of backing behind them, and they put out the. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the My Fight yes. document, the documentary they put out, and that was really good. But the, I mean, this fight's kind of getting lost in in the wilderness. There's so many combat sports fights on this weekend, uh, a lot of MMA, a lot of boxing. But this is for me, for a pure combat sports fan, you'd have to say that this is the fight to watch. This is you've got the pound for pound fight, two of the best pound for pound fighters fighting each other. Uh, there's none of that trash talk behind it. They're kind of, you know, it's going to be a fighter's fight. I think this is the kind of fight that all the fighters are more, con- you know, excited for than more than anything. Yeah. So I'm excited to watch and I really don't know how it's going to go. Perfect. No, and I and I totally agree with you in terms of this is one for the pugilists and just taking it back a bit, you know, the you spoke about the HBO feature, uh, My Story, um, from Cordem, C- Ward and Kovalev. For me, I think that was a fantastic piece of production. I think you've got a great insight to each of the boxers, their their upbringing, um, the hardships that they faced. I mean, you're looking at somebody like Kovalev is from a family from the East Bloc. Um, he lost his stepfather, doesn't seem to have a close relationship with his actual father. His mum's been a very hard worker, has gone out there, continuously grind to kind of give food and provide for the family. And I think we have the future, we see who we have now. And the fact that he actually gave up boxing, I think is very key. And, you know, you t- towards, towards upbringing, what did you guys think about that? Well, and this, how is, this, this is uh, this is the, one of the most amazing features of this fight. I mean, the similarities between two guys from different parts of the world is mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you just touched on Kovalev, you know, who grew up without a father and they were in poverty-stricken uh, lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know. The very same thing can be said about Andre Ward. You know, um, his mother was a crackhead. Uh, his father was a heroin addict, although he was, a, he was you know, he was, he was a brilliant, brilliant, uh, trainer himself. So they both had have had incredibly difficult childhoods. Um, and Ward was taken in by his trainer, Virgil Hunter, who's brought him up in as a fine, fine man. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to say, you know, the guy has exceptional 
uh, behavior yep. you know the way there's no trash talking very very, very articulate conduct. very very intelligent guy yep. uh, you know and it's just how these guys have gone through those tough 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 times and Kovalev's had a massive struggle mm-hmm. you know trying to break into the fold of boxing mm-hmm. you know and it's Kathy Duva you know uh, 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 the one lady within boxing promotion who gave him that chance and he That's stayed nice completely thing. loyal to her and she's delivered she's yeah. taken him right to the top and now they are both fighting for greatness yes you know this is going to go into the ranks of history of boxing and they're going to make millions from it as well and and good luck to them and i think that's another key attribute that both uh boxers have shown you know you spoke about loyalty of korolev moving to kathy duva and once she gave him the opportunity and he's she gave him that exposure he's really repaying her in terms of working with her and you look at the same with ward you know he's a big big name he's had contractual issues which we know about and he stuck with Virgil Hunter, not just because of how he's trained him mm. as a man, but how he supported him and his brother in his life. So, you know, we could talk all day about that's my story. And I think that's really good um, because I think that's getting the, the juices wet for all of the boxing hardcore and the casual fans to kind of open up this fight. I agree with you, it hasn't been promoted well, but I do want to touch a bit on the boxers um, and discuss some of their attributes. So from a perspective of, you know, uh, Ward, what would you say his strengths are? I think he's a, just a highly, highly intelligent uh, fighter. I remember after he fought Carl Frosch, you know, he was saying he wants to get to such a level that he basically dictates how the other fighter is thinking. Mm-hmm. He literally wants to control the other guy's mindset, you know. And that's I think that's what, he's, what he does. You know, the way he moves, he's positioning people into certain ways, you know. He, he nullifies, he completely nullifies the, w- the way people are fighting, you know. Um, he's, he's unbelievably brilliant on fighting on the outside you just can't touch the guy yeah. you just can't touch him he will he will outbox you he's a physically very very strong you know he's got wrestling and mma background or wrestling you know he's a, he's a junior champion in school for wrestling mm. and i think that really helps him on the inside as well yeah. so he's got incredible inside fighting skills yeah he's, he's, he's for me for me we, we met ward in Cota, in vegas many yeah. many years ago mm. and you know i was saying to you then i think this guy is probably the best fighter in the planet and yeah. that's 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 my view of him 100 yeah, percent. and dinners in terms of strengths or weaknesses on on andre ward what would you say well the thing is about andre he doesn't get hit yeah so it, it can't when you're talking about attributes it kind of comes down to it doesn't matter what attributes his opponent has if he can't be hit if yeah. his movement is such that he he's not you know taking the damage that Kovalev's known for dishing out I mean, we can't, until we see the fight, maybe if we get a feel for the first round, then we can say, oh, so this is the route it's going to take. And then we know what way the fight's going to go. But I look at at it as being ultra competitive. I know a lot of guys are giving Ward the win, you know, so far out already, but I think it could could go either way, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think why why we're looking at Ward getting the decision, especially amongst the boxers, I think we've seen what he's done in the past. You know, he's a very clinical, very technical boxer that has great lateral movement. You know, his ring generalship, in terms of how he controls the fight, you know, really, the last probably 10, 15 years, I can't think of anybody better than Roy Jones and potentially Mm -hmm. Mayweather, you know, in terms of just being in total control. Um, I think, you know, you you touched on something there in terms of not being able to get hit. I think that's a very key point. I think Ward is also underrated um, in terms of his strength. He's had fights in the past where he's actually been the bully and he's actually roughed guys up. You know, you think of a, a... uh, Dawson fight uh, where he actually knocked Dawson out you think of the Alan Green fight you know you think about the Frotch which is the big name for us in the UK you see that he's really strong he's got the ability to get up close you know grab your arms and throw hooks and throw jabs to the uh, to the face or to, to the body so for me I think those are his key attributes a weakness I would say for me and, and you know I think it's his lack of killer instincts um, I think that may be telling in this fight purely because uh, he's going to allow the fight to go to the distance. And when I say allow, I mean in the sense of he's going to be controlling his jab, he's going to be, you know, up close, but he's not really landing big bombs, you know. He's just continually hitting the opponent. And I think it's his output that will be could be key because Kovalev is tough. Um, I think Kovalev is actually underrated in terms of how intelligent he is. You know, and just talking about Kovalev's attributes, um, I think for me the key thing we always talk about is his power. I think he's actually very, very ruthless, and that's a very dangerous thing to be in a mm-hmm. box, in my mind. What, what, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, he, he has killed someone. Yeah, the guy has literally punched someone to death. Yeah, I mean, this, this, 
This reminds me of if, uh, Drago. If he dies, Rocky, he dies. Yeah. If he dies, he dies. Yeah. You know, Drago was Russian in Rocky yeah. Four. Yeah. Kovalev is Russian. Krusha <laughs> yeah. Kovalev. Yeah. You know, the guy's got hands of stone. He yeah. has punched someone to death. Let's yeah. not forget that. That's yeah. that's that's one of the worst things that can happen in a boxing ring. Mm-hmm. Totally yeah. So that's something we've got to bear in mind. Um, he is very very good at cutting off the ring. We've seen that. You know, the way he's absolutely battered Pascal and other fighters. But saying that, we have seen a pattern emerge as well. Mm. You know, he fought Bernard Hopkins, a 50-year-old Bernard yeah. Hopkins. Yeah. And Bernard Hopkins, no one has taken Kovalev 12 rounds in a very, very long time. And yeah. a 50-year-old former elite boxer has mm. done that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, he had fought Isaac Chalimba just before Ward. Precisely. Very, very similar kind of fighter. Very difficult style. Very difficult to catch. The guy took him 12 rounds as well. Mm. Now, you got Ward now. Ward is multiple levels above someone like Chilemba. Yeah. And that to me is what's the worst going to happen here. The defining you know, factor. the defining factor is he struggled with 50 year old Bernard Hopkins. Mm. He struggled against Chilemba, couldn't close the show. Yeah. If you can't close the show with Chilemba, yeah. right, are you really going to close the show with Ward? Let's be honest. It's that simple, isn't it? What do you to think, Dinaz? Well, I, I, I take what I'm saying and I think I just feel like it will be a bit more competitive than that I know there's an experience advantage on the side of um, Ward and we know the quality of his opponents uh, illustrates that but um, I'm hoping for a tough fight a back and forth fight and I think we can get that yeah. I think we might get that um, I don't know how do you guys feel about the, the result of the fight do you think it'll be a finish or a decision do, you, do we see either one finishing I think there's a there's there's a host of options. Uh, if I'm putting my money on the table, I do think Ward will get the decision. Um, possibly a late stoppage, but I think on the whole, I think it will be Ward decision. I think, you know, I do feel that it's going to meet expectations mm-hmm. um, purely because you know we look at the big fight last year between Mayweather and Pacquiao, and that was overly hyped. You know, you had Sky, BBC, CNN, and everybody watching that. This is a fight that nobody's watching. As Kathy Duvey said, and I'll give her credit, this is the fight that you want to tell the casual or the friend that is kind of not sure about boxing, you this is the fight you want to tell them to mm. watch. So I think it will meet expectation. I do think Ward, you know, he's just got that ability and the experience in terms of being in big fights, facing big punches. Um, I think he's got the experience. Where I feel it could go against him, and, you know, he's not getting the credit for this, is actually he's daring to be great. Kovalev is very, very feared. Ward is jumping up to face him, and I think... You know, he's jumping up a good five to seven pounds, which mm-hmm. makes a difference. Kovalev, this is his natural weight. He's always been fighting at this weight. So I just think it's the technical ability of Ward that's going to see him through. But Kovalev could get the, could get a knockout or he could also hurt Ward. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, like the point I want to make, I mean, a lot of people keep on saying Kovalev is a lot bigger than Ward. But let's not forget, uh, Andre Ward is an Olympian. Mm. Is a gold, the last American boxer to win a gold at the Olympics. Yeah. And he fought at... Light heavyweight, yeah. Very true, very true. Right, so I know he dom- absolutely dominated the uh, super middleweight division and he won the super six, be it on favourite Carl Froch to do it. Um, but he has fought at light heavyweight before and he's won gold at the Olympics. So yeah. I, I, I discount that, to yeah. be honest. Um, it could be a Kovalev finish. Let's not, you know, I mean, if Kovalev's going to win, I think he's going to have to finish Ward. That's 100%. the only way I can see Kovalev winning. But. Ward, I just think he's just too good. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think he's just going to nullify the guy. He's going to stay out of range. He's going to come in close. So, you know, sh- you know, he's just going to, he's just going to shut, he's just going to shut him down. Basically, yeah. working very, very close. It's not allowed have to give his power shot. Yeah. Simple. What do you think, Dinez? Uh, I would, if I was to, so are we going to log some official predictions? I think before the end of the show, we're definitely going to do okay. that. So we can, you can either give us, give a bit of talk now, or you can yeah, wait. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't want to make it a clean sweep but I'm kind of leaning towards Andre Ward as well I'm just kind of hoping that it's a back and forth fight for the ages and these two cement their place in history with this fight and who knows we can maybe even get a trilogy out of it 100% I think that's a great point so just as we're doing this show I thought it'd be good to go to the call lines Um, so we'll be going out to the call lines shortly um, and getting some guests and, 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 and feedback and reactions so we'll be going to uh, the phone number ending in 081 uh, 081, we're coming to you now. Hello. Hello, how you guys doing? How are we doing? Who, who am I speaking with? Uh, Nicholas, how are you doing? How are you doing, Nicholas? How are you doing? You excited for the fight, Nicholas? Yeah, yeah, to be honest, I'm very, very excited. Um, I can't 
can't remember the last time I've been so excited about a boxing match, to be fair. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so um, I think it's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a very, very great fight, a very exciting fight. And um, who are you picking, Nicholas? Because... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was saying, um, I think it's gonna be a very, very, it's a very exciting fight. I haven't been excited about a boxing fight like this for a long, long time. And uh, I think it's just um, the reason why it's so exciting because of the different the different styles of both, of both boxes. <laughs> and it's gonna be a, I think it's going to be a very, very good clash because, you know, you've got a knockout king against a, a super efficient and a very gifted technical fighter. Okay. So I think those two styles of, clash, of, two styles of fighters is going to be a very, a very, very good clash. Hundred uh, percent. Totally agree with you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put put you on the edge there, uh, Nicholas. Um, who are you predicting to win this fight? Uh, I it's, I think it's gonna be a close one. But <coughs> I think it's gonna go it's gonna go to Ward by decision. Yep. Even mm. though decision. even though I do think that Kolarov is very very capable of knocking him out, but I think uh, I think Ward is just gonna be too smart for that. Too good, too smart, and I think he's just gonna win by points. Oh, that's great to hear. So, thank you very much, Nicholas, for calling in. Um, just a quick one. Um, can you tell us how you found us ab- about us? You've been following us on the, the good old social media. Yeah, yeah. So, well, social media. So, basically, somebody sent it to me. Um, I'll I'll send the link through. I found it through another friend on uh, Instagram. Perfect. And then I just joined in and just. And followed us. Well, we, ap- we appreciate you di- dialing into to our first live guest show and being the first live caller. So definitely, thank you very much and keep listening. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and dial back in. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Thank so we're going to go. Nicholas. Cheers, Nicholas. <clears throat> so we're going to go to another caller. Um, a caller ending in uh, one two five one two five. We're coming out to you. Hello. Oh, hi guys. My name's Ed. Hi, Ed. Ed, how are you doing, Ed? Ed. How you doing, yeah, Sid? How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Anything you want to sp- ask us or, 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 or talk about the Ward yeah. Kovalev fight? Yes. Yeah, so, um, um, as for everyone, I've been watching various video clips and watching the interviews and so forth and so on. It's been a fight that everyone's been looking forward to actually looking. Um, but the question I had for you guys is in terms of what the legacies for both factors would be were they to actually lose this. So, for example, um, the point I'm, I suppose I'm trying to make is, in terms of looking at someone like Ward, who is seen across the globe as the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world, and you're looking at Kovalev, who obviously has this uh, massive reputation with him, mm-hmm. what does a defeat do for each individual in your, from your perspective? Inam, would you want to take that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think, like, you know, from everything that we've seen so far, I think... Um, Legacy is so critical to Ward. You know, Mayweather has been the pound for pound, pound number one fighter for the last you know, decade, say. Um, and Ward has been close behind. I know people talk about Roman Gonzalez, but you know, I think we all know that this is so important to Ward for a number of reasons. Not 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 only just to cement his status as the number one pound for pound fighter in the planet, but he also gives him the chance, as he said, in one night to get three belts. And basically become the king of the light heavyweight division, so I think it's uh, I think it's a fundamentally a very very important factor in in in, in Wall's career. If 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 he didn't win, I don't think it's going to have that much of a detrimental impact. I mean, let's not forget he 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 solidified the 168 pound division, you know. So he's still going to have a very very strong legacy. Um, in terms of Kovalev, if Kovalev lost. Um, you know, I mean, if you if you compare Kovalev's resume against Wars, it's just not comparable. You know, if if Kovalev wins, I think that cements his status in legacy. You know, it really makes his resume very very strong. If he doesn't win, I, I think he's going to be remembered as a as a good fighter. You know, but he lost against a great fighter. You know. Uh, Dinas, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just uh, said, following on from what uh, Enam was saying, I just think it, it, it goes, I don't know if you were listening earlier in the show, but it goes back to the, the, the whole idea of there could possibly be a trilogy out of this because I think it's so close, it will be so closely fought that if Ward was to win and it was a complete blowout, he just, you know, controlled him the whole the whole fight, I don't know how they could sell a rematch, but anything other than that, even if, especially if it was a Kovalev win, I think we've we've got a trilogy on our hands, if not at least a rematch. So, I think that's what's in the future for these guys, regardless of uh, the result. So, said coming coming back to you. Uh, if it was a, just sorry, just so I can 
just so I can understand, do you, um, I want to ask, actually, do you reckon that if, let's say, in the instance where there's a quick knockout, you know, like within the first round, unexpected, mm. right, and Kovalev wins, you still think they could make a trilogy out of that? Oh, I think if that was, that would be the biggest case for a trilogy. If they if they could advertise that something like that was to happen and that 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 would go down as a fluke win, yeah. I, I, for me, I would have to agree. I think if that was to happen, I think either fighter. I think nobody. I mean, it would be great for boxing, um, but I think it, a rematch and there is a rematch clause. I think one hundred percent that would uh, invoke that rematch, and then I think it all it all depends on what happens in a rematch. If, for example, the person that got knocked out in the first round first fight is uh, wins victoriously and is quite, you know, con- consecutively winning the fight in terms of the rounds, then I think you, you are looking at a trilogy. Um, you look at the fighter's age as well, Sergio. I think, you know, they're both 32, not uh, Kovalev is 33, sorry. Um, so it's in their, it's in their, their, their best interest to try and make this a good fight to have the fans, the fans demand more. I think even if you look above the division, the div- division above them, cruiserweight, there's nobody that really challenges either of those guys. So they're the type. Ty- it's kind of like Godzilla and King Kong at the moment. Those are the two guys that can only compete with each other, and that they're they're dominating the boxing world. So yeah, it's possible. So Cedric, just a quick question for you as well, because we, uh, we're doing a bit of a drive by. Who are you predicting to win the fight on Saturday night? Kovalev. Perfect. And in, and how is he winning? Um, I just think he's just too big and too strong. Don't get me wrong. I, I absolutely, I think Ward is a fantastic fighter. I think that Kovalev has been more active. And I think that the fact that he's been more active means that it, it, it potentially could mean that he has just that little bit extra sharpness. I'm not saying that Ward's not sharp. I mean, Ward is perfectly preserved, but he is coming up. Yep. And because he is coming up, Kovalev has the habit of actually fighting that that way. And I just think that it might just be a little reach, just a little bit too far. I think that it leans a little bit in Kovalev's favour, in my opinion. Yep. No, great, great comments. uh, Great points as well. Thank you very much for calling, Cedric. Um, And uh, continue to follow us on on social media and um, look forward to next week's podcast. Thank you for calling. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to go out to the phone number ending 490. 490, we're coming out to you. Hey. Hi, 490. Hey Hi, what's your name? Daryl J. What's going Darryl on, J. boys? How are you doing? Hi, you know Darryl what? I forgot hey. to ask people where they're calling from. Where are you calling from, Daryl? Calling from South East London. South East London. Please. Perfect, perfect. So, be listening into the show. Uh, you've heard the discussion yeah, around Ward and Kovalev. Late. That's not a problem. Yeah, a Better late, late than never. Yep, yep, yep. A little bit late. But, um, so, missed out on quite a bit of the content. Um, but, just basically coming in, I'm excited about this fight tomorrow. Um, I do think it's going to be a, a drawn-out contest. I don't think any of these guys are massive punchers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, once they face each other, we're going to see the, you know, the, true, the true strength behind each of them. But my, my money's on, on Kovalev, you know, going the distance and winning on points um, and targeting the body of Ward because uh, that's, that's where the damage is going to be done for Ward because... I just see the styles being the, contra- the contrasting styles being a bit too much for Ward overall. No, oh, that's that's really good, really, really good comment. So, um, especially on on Kovalev, um, I think you know, just to go back to the, the point, you know, Kovalev is a more active fighter and he is very powerful. So, you know, a lot of people are saying that it's hundred percent Ward, hundred percent Kovalev. I do think you know there is a big case for it to be a fifty fifty fight. Um, and yeah. um, I mean, in terms of whoever wins this, I mean, would you be interested in seeing uh, a, a second fight b- between the two guys, between the two boxers? Um, I th- personally, no, because that's obviously it's going to interest the boxers from a commercial sense and and the purses that they're going to be made from the you know the second and third fight if that was to go that way. But the, the division, it would be nice to cause they're both unbeaten. It'd be nice for that whoever was to win to go on and 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 fight other fighters in the division. Um, and, and call that a day for that particular piece because we've seen too many, in my opinion, quite a few, quite a few rematches over the over the years um, and trilogies. But this doesn't, to me, come across as one that is exactly going to be um, exciting in that way. I think it's going to be a drawn out fight, very tactical. Obviously, Ward's got less less um, fighting um, over the past few years in him. Kovalev's been extremely active in, in you know across the division. Um, and therefore, you're going to see a ring rust 
from war's perspective um, versus the, the individual that is sharp and on his toes. No, good, really good comment. So um, I think Dinez has got a quick, quick question for you, Daryl. Yeah, hi, Daryl. Um, I just wanted to touch on something you spoke about earlier. Um, so if we're talking yeah. about the technical aspects of the fight and looking from a technique standpoint, what do you think mm-hmm. Ward can do to... I mean, I'd imagine that they're training knowing that Kovalev is going to go for the body at some point, whether it be later on in the rounds or, or early on from the start. What do you think that d- they can do to combat that, looking at what... Ward has done in the past when he's gone against big power punches that go to the body like Kovalev does so I, I, I don't know I think he's going to try and pace himself I think he's going to try and draw him into um, a, a sense of discomfort in the, in the, in the latter rounds say, say for instance from round 6 onwards um, and in that um, I, I, I see I see, the, I see the fight as Ward starting to panic in the later rounds mm-hmm. there's there's more pressure on him. There's more pressure. He's got more pressure based on his on his on his on his past. His his father passed in a way. A lot more to prove um, for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kovalev is, you know, he's come from humble beginnings, um, and he's he, he's raw with it. You know, he's he's made he's, he's made some good money. He's looking. To, he's coming from, uh, from a different perspective, and and he's a warrior in that. Ward, I'm not saying that he's not a warrior, but I just feel that emotions are going to get toward more than Kovalev. And in that, that creates anxiety in the fighting style. Um, I see that Kovalev is just, you know, Ward's going to try and keep his distance, keep his distance, afraid of that that, that kind of lethal punch, holding into the body, Ward, Kovalev going into the body. And over time, Ward's starting to look a bit, it will become evident that he's a lack, he's lack of... Um, um, uh, Lack of rounds in the latter years is going to pay. It's going to pay with dividends for his potential loss. I mean, I want Ward to win, but I just think it's going to be a points victory on Kovalev, no, just great. based on the look of the yeah the fighters. No, great point. Great points, Ed. I really appreciate you calling in. Um, uh, keep following uh, social media. Um, so thank you very much for for dialing in. Um, we're going to go to another caller, but we hope to speak to you again, Daryl. Cool. Cheers. Thank, right. you. thank you for calling, Daryl. Thank, thank you, Daryl. Cheers. Bye. Uh, 898, we're coming out to you. 898, hello. Hello. Hello, 898. Hello. Hi, 898, how are you doing? I'm good, not too bad. Hi, who am I speaking with? Uh, Shem. Shem, how are you doing, Shem? And uh, you've been listening to the show for... Uh, I've just tuned in literally about... 30 seconds ago, so oh. I just heard um, part part of the last caller. No problem. So we're mainly discussing the Ward versus uh, Kovalev fight. Um, and um, um has got a question for you, um, and maybe give us some comments afterwards. Shem, yeah, where are you calling in from? Uh, West London. I'm, I'm uh, Ned Chiswick at the moment. Okay. What what, what 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 do you think about this fight? I think it's going to be a very close fight. It's going to be a very good fight. Um... I want Ward to do it. I think he, he might just do it, but it's, it's, it's anyone's on the night, to be honest with you. It's, it's, a, it's going to be a real close one. And what are your plans? Where are you going to be watching this fight? Um, I might meet up and um, watch it, or uh, I, I might watch it from home. I'm not too sure. It's, it's an early one. I think it's about 4 o'clock on Sunday, Sunday morning, so not too sure. But, um, yeah, def- definitely going to be watching it, 100%. Oh, good, good, good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we've got... Uh, people watching this fight and getting ready and, and anticipated for this fight. So um, we're going to come off the phone lines now. Um, in fact, sorry, we have one last caller, but thank you very much for calling Shem. Thank you for calling Shem. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate listening in to the podcast. And we're now going out to a number that ends in 300. 300, going once, going twice. Hello, 300, can you hear us? Hello? I think they may have dropped the call. Hello, 300. Okay, not to worry. So that's, I think that's it from uh, the lines. Uh, so we're, let's continue the conversation am- amongst ourselves. So in terms of uh, Ward versus Kovalev and what this fight means, and, you know, we focus so much on this, we haven't touched on the un- undercard, but, you know, I think this does mean a lot for either boxers. You know, we've had discussions about legacy and um, we've had discussions about ring rust and potentially you know, the, the lack of activity getting towards. Um, and for me, this just makes a fantastic fight because, you know, you've got all different types of boxing fans wondering who's going to be really reigning supreme. Um, and for some reason, 
it's really falling out under the radar. You know, you, like I said earlier, we've got the division of light heavyweight. These two are the kings and above them, it's only the heavyweights, which they're never going to fight. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to this um, and I think it's going to be uh, an excellent fight. And um, I hope that, you know, we will be discussing uh, a, a fantastic, uh, rev we'll have a fantastic review next week on, on this. Um, Dinah, Zinam, what, what's your thoughts? Um, well, I was just uh, actually while we've been on air, I've just noticed that Lennox Lewis is given the edge to Ward, so that's a big, that is a big endorsement yeah. from a from a top heavyweight legend. So um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm looking, obviously, like the rest of us, I'm looking forward to the fight. Um, but I think that what will really be interesting to see what happens after this, when we're talking about legacy, when we're talking about um, what's next for these guys, we've got Ward moving up. So will he make a home at that division, a permanent home? You know, we, we, who knows? We could even see him maybe hang him up after that. Where yeah. does it go? Where does he go from there? Is yeah. there anything left to do? He's completed the game of boxing There's almost. Do domination. I mean, there is talk, um, and this is dependent on uh, Jack DeGale winning. It could be B Badu Jack either. They're mm -hmm. fighting for the super middleweight uh, to unify uh, a couple of belts at that div in those divisions. Um, there was talk that that could be an option because James DeGale is known to actually be quite big and actually you could fill out to light heavy um or they could come down to a catch weight um there's names like stevenson adonis stevenson who has said he wants to fight the winner of these two fights so i think for me of these two fighters so i think you know the options are out there but i really think you know winner or lose i don't think there's any loser from this fight yes no. on the box rec and on the records one person will take the l but i think they've both stepped up mm -hmm. you know they've all they've they've delivered what they've promised in terms of having test fights warm-up fights to, to get to the big one and we're now we're now here so yeah. i think for me the it, both of them will come out with with, yeah. with great great blemishing characters for sure i mean i think the someone's got to lose someone's going to take the l but the bigger l would be if they didn't fight yeah we would all lose we yeah. would all lose they would lose out there would always be questions precisely so i look forward to it. even if it's just the one fight i look forward to this fight yeah and it might sound that i'm getting ahead of myself thinking of these trilogies but that's just how i am with boxing i get excited about the storytelling behind it that's why i love these hbo specials hey, listen, as well we we know that it's been done before we've had it with great fighters in, in the past and we've had it with good fighters in the present so listen don't don't worry about that you know we, it's good to get excited um so i can see we've got one person that called in and Given that it's our test show, we want to give everybody the chance to speak. So I'm going to go back to this caller. It's a number ending in 060. 060, we're coming out to you. Hello, 060? Yes. Hi there. How's it going? How are you doing? So we were discussing the Ward versus Kovalev fight. Um, what's your name, please? Yeah. Gary. Gary. Hi, Gary. Uh, what's your thoughts? Um, I'm just glad this fight's actually here, to be honest. Um, boxing's been a bit lackluster recent. It's it's had its it's had a few good ones, obviously Pat Mayweather, mm -hmm. but I mean, fights for the ages, we ain't had much of them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people ducking and dodging, and it's more of a business nowadays. Um, I, I'm glad to see two people put it all on the line. Mm -hmm. Finally here, yeah. um, <sighs> Andre Ward, all day long for me. But that's who you're picking. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's this fight. This fight here, the thing that scares me is Kovalev. Because he, he's, he's technically a good boxer regardless, but yeah. he's got that power as well. Yes. Ward's not used to facing people like that. Another another caveat for me is Ward's been out of the game for a while. Yeah. Yeah, he's been out of the game for a while. Um, they say ring rust. I'm not sure if I completely go with ring rust 100% because as much as you're not fighting a pro fight, you're still in the gym mm -hmm. training all the time and sparring all the time. So yeah, I don't see that ring rust. I don't I don't know if I go with that 100%. But um, I don't know. Andre Ward hasn't looked like the old Andre Ward in the last fight that I saw. And that I haven't been up to date with all the fights. But the last fight I saw, I think it was like July times or something. Mm -hmm. yep, it didn't look like the, the Andre Ward of old for me. Yeah, yeah I haven't followed Kovalev um, 100% neither because I've been so busy recently but um, I do remember the Bernard Hopkins fight so I'm just going back to that to be honest I mean maybe he's declined a bit um, from what I heard in some of the um, the pre the pre shows and all of that I heard that his performance in one of his last fights weren't the greatest neither but um, I think Andre Ward I still think Andre Ward and the reason I say that you've got bangers and normally when you've got a banger and a boxer it's called mm -hmm. a boxing one, first of all. Yep. Yeah, you've got a banger and you've got a boxer. Now, Kovalev is a boxer as well, but he's he's got a heavy hand and 
he's not as technically gifted as Ward. Ward's undefeated in amateur and professional. That's saying something. He doesn't even know what, what a loss is. Yeah. Seen him in, a, in the interviews. He's given me confidence just from the way he's speaking, his demeanour. He seems confident. I'm, not, I'm, I'm looking in his eyes in the, in the interviews and all of that. I'm not seeing any fear there. There's no uncertainty that I've seen him. Yeah, the uncertainty is more in my mind in what is he going to bring. But I'm sure he'll, t- I'm sure he'll pull it out of the bag. He knows what's on the line. Um, you'll be all right. You'll be all right, man. Perfect. No, that's... Right. I, I, still, I, still, I still go with Ward. Perfect. No, that's a really good comment. Um, and just a quick one. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're working on this show in this in the, in the the structure. So is any anything in the world of boxing that you want to comment on or maybe ask us a question about or anything you've heard in the last seven days? Nothing much out there. Um, the one thing, you know, like I'm saying, I haven't, I haven't been so busy recently, but I saw something about the, um, it's not entirely boxing, but the Conor McGregor Mayweather comparison. I don't know uh, if yes. I should weigh in on something. Else. Should I weigh in on something? Yeah, like please, that? please, or, 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 give us your opinions. You know, this is the forum for yeah. boxers and fans right. to speak. All right, so, all right, at the end of the day, yeah, I saw one or two forums that, you know, if I got a moment or two, I look on the boxing page on FB and see what, keep up to date, keep mm-hmm. up to date with things. Conor McGregor, Mayweather, everyone's talking, ah, Mayweather said this, he said that, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, Conor McGregor is practically another Mayweather. I don't, I'm not a fan of Mayweather's money persona, but McGregor's taken that on. You know, he came to his um his, his uh press conference in a bloody uh, a white mink fur coat. Yeah, exactly. The mink talking coat. about he's got one... <laughs> One Bentley for each of his UFC belts. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's sounding like Mayweather. He's just a white Irish version. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, saying that um, Mayweather's disrespectful, calling himself a legend. Well, he's, he talked about his money as McGregor made 300 in a night, 300 million a night, or 200 million a night, or whatever. He said all of that, but what he did say was, I've gone 20 years undefeated at the top of my sport. Yeah. When McGregor does that, let me know. Yep. He did mention the money as well. McGregor hasn't made his money. That, that's, that's neither here nor there, in my opinion. What he did mention, and I think that a man could call himself a legend, 20 years undefeated, yep. top of the sport. Yep. A lot of people making these comments on my probably ain't even been alive 20 years, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Shane, we do have to wrap that up, but that's a fantastic uh, sort of uh, point of view and, and commentary on the Mayweather McGregor. Um, I don't know whether to call it a spat or anything serious because we don't know what's going to happen there. But it's not. It doesn't look like nothing. See, I think it's the media that's made it. More that's making it more. To be honest, definitely. Yeah. But do appreciate you calling in. And um, please keep looking out for for future shows and look forward to speaking to you soon. Cool, man. Keep up the good work. Guys. Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. Thanks. All right. So, uh, guys, we're going to begin to talk about a couple of other t- subjects. Um, I think one thing we do need to touch on from a boxing perspective, is the uh, Luis Ortiz fight versus Maddox King-Scott. Um, I mean, in a nutshell, it was actually kind of very dismal. Um, King Kong didn't look like the former sort of hero that we had known him to fight in, in, against, you know, Jennings, uh, Thompson, and so forth. Um, Scott didn't want to fight either. He's getting a bad reputation now about taking easy falls. So just a couple, I guess, a couple of lines on that in Amadinaz. What, what was your thought on that on that? I don't, I, I, I don't think I can really add more yeah. to it than that because you know you, you said it to it too. Malik Scott has got a horrible reputation for doing stuff like this. You know mm. he had he had that situation where people were saying that when John T. Wilder knocked him out, it was phantom fake. Phantom punch. It yeah. was a phantom punch. You know, so this guy's got a history mm. of you know stinking their place out, as they say. Yes, and that's what he done here. You yeah. know, you know, within the first round, the referee was saying, "What's going on?" Mm. Listen, the referee was helping the guy up yeah. from the ground. He said, "You know," and to me, it's almost like. Mate, you're not going to come in and just walk out with a check. You're going to fight. Right. Yes, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. You know, and that says you. That was a 14 second count. Yes, you know, and the referee was like, "Come on, and you know, people say, why is he helping him back out?'" But it's like, you know, he stacked their place out. Yeah, 100%. You know? It's a that. shame, so carry it, is, it is a shame, but you know, and then people, you know, complain about Ortiz as well. Look, you know, it's the first time he's fought in Europe. He's probably, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, probably got a lot of nerves. He's trying mm-hmm. to perform. You know, he's got a very, very negative fighter. You know, it's very, very difficult to deal with someone like that. If someone's not going to fight at all and just completely run with no intention of winning, I can just assume that's going to be very, very frustrating. Yeah. You know, so I think you know, give Ortiz a break. If anyone should take, you know, take, you know, to get any criticism, it's got to be Scott. Yeah. 
hundred um, percent. And on that card, there was a bit of controversy. Um, firstly, I, um, before I go into the controversy, I just want to quickly touch on fantastic performance by uh, Jason Sosa against Stephen Smith. I thought it was a good performance from Stephen Smith. You know, the Smith brothers, uh, they he, he, as a family, a great boxing family. Smith really tried. I think he tried with all his heart, but I think Sosa is just another level above. Um, but really, you know, the, the kind of controversy on the night was the Jamie McDonald uh, fight versus Solis. Um, McDonald lost the fight, if you ask me. Um, when I was scoring it, I've, I had Solis ahead um, by two rounds. Um, at best, you know, you could probably argue one, but I didn't have the wide scoring that the judge had it. And I think that will be a problem because, you know, it... Damon McDonald's got a good reputation. He's gone abroad, won belts, he's fought. The number one's number two's, but that was a fight that he actually should have lost. And, you know, we didn't really know much about Solis, so he wasn't given much of a chance. But I think he's got a great prospect in terms of he's a former featherweight champion. You know, he's actually gone out there and, and, and beaten guys up. And I think he started from round one like an absolute bulldog. He <laughs> ran at McDonald and he was throwing jabs hooks to the body and McDonald struggled for the first four rounds if you ask me to get out of that I mean what's your thoughts you know, on, on that yeah I think this is the second time like on a matchroom card that there's been a really really bad decision I yeah. think the first one I saw was Beltran versus Ricky Burns yes. when that was given a draw mm -hmm. and you've got to feel for people like that you know they've trained for months and weeks to yeah. achieve their dream of gaining this world title yeah yeah, and it's not just those four for eight weeks mm. it's their lifetime yeah yeah so they've had their dream just literally taken away by, you know, let's, we can't really say it, but I think we're all th know or thinking, corrupt judging, yeah? So it's happened once on a matchroom, matchroom card before, and this is the second time. I know we've c covered this once before, Coach, when we were saying, you know, it just seems like on a high profile, with the high profile opponents, they can't pull it off, yeah? Yep. You know, uh, whereas whereas this one, you know, it's, it's the second time it's happened, and you know, British boxing is starting to get a bit of a bad reputation overseas. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. a lot of people, you know, in the states, you know, this that saying, you know, like they kidnap the belt and they keep it ransom. You know, yeah. we don't want to go down that route. Yeah, you know, you know, Germany had a horrible reputation yeah, for that, and now we're getting it. Yeah, we are. And you I know? think you look at, you know, last year, um, and especially towards the start of this year, I think British boxing was being heralded as having so many world champions, and you had to kind of you know, be a hardcore to kind of look behind the title and see, well, how did they get those belts? You know, were they vacant titles? Who was the opponents? You know, we're talking mm. Charles Martin type of calibre. Mm. And nonetheless, you have to beat what's in front of you. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's not good, but I'm hoping that was just a, an occasion, you know, where the, the location played its part, being in Monaco. Um, but, you know, again, it happened. We move on. Um, Solis, I think, will be back. You know, he's got nothing to feel ashamed of because he really performed and fought hard. So, guys, I think we need to wrap up now. Um, it's been a great podcast. Um, just want to continue to ask everybody to keep listening. Um, listen to us on iTunes and Blog Talk at, and follow us by using the, the, the words Raps on TV. So you follow us at Raps on TV. Same for Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Raps on TV. You can find us there and we also have a YouTube page where you'll be able to watch these podcasts live and be listening and also continue to dial in so we can get your opinion. Remember, this is Raps on TV and we want to be the voice for boxing and we do talk boxing. And I'm Dinas, would you like to say a couple of words? And I'm just ready to watch this fight. I've, I've been waiting for weeks just to see this Kovalev Ward fight. So, we'll, I mean, I'm sure we'll have a lot to say next time we meet up. But, uh, yeah. And I'm yeah, I just want to say thank you for everyone that's called in. Just want to let you guys know we've got big, big plans lined up. You know, we've got good, good, solid interviews lined up as well. People coming to the studio. So we've got a lot to cut, you know, a lot to build on the next week. So please do keep on calling in. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. So enjoy the weekend and enjoy the show. Yeah.